Hello, Holly Warner here, coming to you with another topic, a hot topic in the carnivore world. Only this one's not just for carnivores. I'm noticing that a lot of people are talking about supplementing with boron or that we could become boron deficient in a carnivore style of eating. Here's the thing, if you're doing nose to tail, you're still probably not getting the proper amount of boron that you need within your diet. Now we have this RDA, this recommended daily amount, which is basically not out there. It's non-existent because we believe that we're getting enough, whether it be from our water or our soil and whatnot. But if you're eating meat, you're not getting it from the meat and that's a problem. Um, you can get it from bones. However, I don't know too many people that are chomping on bones. I mean, you can get it from bone meal. I think it's either one or two teaspoons a day, depending on the bone meal that you're getting. But you really want to be aware of the source of what you're getting because of heavy metals. So you want to be careful with that. You can supplement with it. Um, Pure Encapsulations is a brand that a lot of naturopaths and functional medicine doctors and, and clinicians like myself tend to recommend. They're usually pretty good. They're a top-notch supplement. However, they do contain... Um, I think it's a vegetable cellulose of some sort. So while that's not really an issue, it isn't considered carnivore compliant. For me, I don't care. It's fine. If I'm going to supplement, that's what I'm going to use. It's not a big deal. Or you can just go ahead and, and take boron itself. And the levels of which that we should be supplementing are actually surprising. We don't really have an RDA. They say that we're getting enough, but we're not. If you look at people in Jamaica, where, what is it, 70% of the population has arthritis, they've got zero zip nilch boron in their water, in their soil. They, they're boron deficient. Then you look at other places like Western Turkey, or um, I think it's Israel, perhaps, where they have no real issues with arthritis, and their boron levels are, are quite high, actually. If you were to look at what we deem as toxic here, at least according to the literature, you would find that people in certain areas, like I mentioned, Western Turkey or in Israel, uh, would be umpteen billion times higher in their consumption, just naturally. I mean, when you look at a liter of water and they're drinking, you know, ideally two liters of water a day, you're going to see that their levels would be what we would deem here in, you know, either Canada or the U.S. as toxic levels. Yet there isn't any literature that shows that those levels, and they are quite high, um, are actually toxic. What was it that I wanted to go on about? I wanted to talk a little bit about how boron's not considered essential. It's considered a cofactor. Here to me is the caveat with that, is that if something is considered a cofactor, but the things that it's going to be a cofactor for are, you know, like magnesium and calcium are very much dependent on it for either their utilization production or their function or helping their enzymatic pathways, whatever the case may be then while it is deemed a, a cofactor, to me that becomes then essential. And when we look at mental cognition, we look at brain health, we look at a, a bunch of different factors, boron to me borders on being essential. Now, you don't need a lot. There are theories out there that we should be taking actually much more than what we talk about. I don't think you need to take a lot of it. I wouldn't mind seeing people getting their levels tested before they go mass dosing. However, I'm not too worried about my patients um, consuming too much of it. Boron is actually something that I've used for uh, my thyroid patients, for thyroid function. It's something that I've used for uh, a number of different uh, health issues with patients. Kidney stones, for one, because it does help to reduce that um, uh, your calcium that you're going to find within the kidney stone within the kidney that gets excreted into the urine, you're going to find it's going to be much lower when you're taking borons, which does help out with that. I've used it with patients who have ADHD. Now, I'm not saying it's a cure for ADHD, but it definitely does help certain mechanisms within the brain, which is really cool. So it's going to speed things up and slow things down in the right amounts. You do find that when you have, um, it, it's an increased mental cognition. So when you take boron and you're supplementing with it, it does help people who with ADHD and in that regard, it helps with short and long-term memory. Um, our dexterity is helped with it a lot. Something to take note of though, is that if you're gonna supplement with it, make sure you do it early in the day. I like to take it in the morning, no later than like noon throughout the day, 
because you will find that it is very energizing. It is very mentally stimulating for your brain. So it is gonna energize you. And if you're taking this before bed, you're gonna find that you are not gonna sleep. Your brain is going to be very awake and processing everything. So it is not recommended to take this in the evening. You will regret it. We naturally tend to have high amounts of boron in our parathyroid gland. We have it in our spleen, our heart, and of course our bones. Any of my patients who have osteoporosis or even osteopenia or are possibly going to be prone to it, hereditary, genetic, etc., boron is something that's very important. It's going to increase your bone density. It's going to increase that turnover on how we're producing bone, how we're making bone, making our bone nice and dense and healthy. We want to have healthy bones. It also helps with arthritic pain. So I have patients who have rheumatoid arthritis or just regular old arthritis or lupus arthritis, etc., and they're actually taking boron and it helps to mitigate those painful symptoms and while almost reversing the disease itself and i hate to say reversing but if you catch it soon enough yeah you absolutely can and prevention is key right okay so in short just to recap uh dosage wise between six to ten milligrams a day is uh, a pretty safe bet you're not risking any kind of toxicity with that kind of a dose that's what I usually tell my patients to take. If you're vegan, um, you're probably not watching this because I'm carnivore, so whatever. Um, that's, a, that's a, you know, you can go for the lower, go for the six milligrams a day. You're probably getting a little bit more boron in your diet um, just by default because there does tend to be a little bit more in, um, in plants, plant food. If you are having a standard American diet, a regular diet, a paleo diet, a carnivore diet, Basically, any kind of diet out there, you should probably be supplementing with boron. It's not just the carnivores. So when people come on board and they go, oh, I thought you didn't need to supplement because you're carnivore. Well, you know what? If you lived in West Turkey, then no, you wouldn't need to supplement. If you lived in Jerusalem, then no, no, or Israel, no, you're not going to need to supplement. If you live in the United States in certain areas, you're going to need to supplement. If you live in other areas, you might not. You live in Canada, you're getting a pretty low level when it comes to either our soil or our water. You're not getting a whole lot. So I do tend to say supplement, be safe. You know, the doses that are being talked about by some of the experts out there for bone density and, and osteopenia, they're looking at like 20 milligrams a day. 30 milligrams a day that they're advising people to take. So when I say between six to 10 milligrams a day, that is on a very low conservative recommendation. If you are a patient of mine, I will probably recommend something a little bit higher. Once I have a complete health history, I've reviewed your blood work, I've looked at a number of other factors, I see what else you're supplementing with, I know what your dietary patterns are, I know what medications you're taking, I understand your liver function, your kidney function, and, and an entire, as I said, health history. So for me to say on this, where I am not giving medical advice, and I am not a doctor, and I am not your clinician, so this isn't a, a personalized recommendation, I'm saying you are in a safe zone, typically with the six to 10 milligrams across the board, that's pretty generic. Anything over that, I would suggest um, speaking to a functional medicine practitioner, someone like myself or trained clinician who's able to advise on supplements. Please do not be getting your recommendations from your personal trainer because they are not trained to tell you the amounts and the dosages and specifics on supplements. So please be advised. I did have one patient come to me whose personal trainer advised them to take something ridiculous. And uh, they were basically using laundry detergent, borax, which is a whole other ball game. And you can in theory do that, but there are caveats to it. Anyway, they were using this and it was in massive doses and they got pretty sick. Not because it was toxic, but because of other factors. So please, for the love of all things holy, take your supplemental advice from someone who is trained and legally allowed to give said advice. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day. Go get you some boron.